Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP, and today I'm going to try to answer a viewer question, and I'm hoping I've selected the right project. So let's go ahead and get started. So in my comments, I recently got a question about setting up Adaptive Purge. Now I've looked at several different projects you can use for Adaptive Purge. In fact, I'm using one on my Mercury One and that's the Clipper Macros. There's also Camp. And then lastly, I discovered this little project, which is detailed on printables. And I actually like this method because it's slicer agnostic. You don't have to know scripting. It's real easy just to cut and paste the code and, and customize as you would like. The only issue I see with it is right now it is not compatible with Cura, but I'm sure there's a way around that as well. Now, since I use Orca Slicer, I'm going to go ahead and set this up in Orca Slicer and we can take a look. I'm also going to point out that on my Ender 3 S1 Plus, I'm not currently using Adaptive Purge. So this would be a great example. On that printer, I'm using a Sonic Pad and Sonic Pad, in my mind, is sort of hard to set up for using various Clipper scripts. Now, I guess I'm looking more closely at this project, and it is from the Teaching Tech channel. So you can go over there and take a look, but I'm just going to go ahead and set it up in Orca Slicer. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, to start out, I've opened up Orca Slicer, and I have my Ender 3 S1 Plus profile loaded in. And where I'm going to be working is I'm going to concentrate my work underneath the printer settings. And in my case, I'm interested in the machine G code. Now the machine G code, I have some G code set up in the start end. And I think I also have some, no, I don't have any really other code set up. I just have it set up in the start and end. And let's just take a look at this code. And do I have a way to make this box bigger? Now I don't. And if I scroll down here, I'm actually using the adaptive bed mesh code to run that within my slicer. So this is doing an adaptive bed mesh, meaning it's doing the bed mesh on just the area the print's going to be. And using those same variables, I'm going to add this new purge method. Now, right now, I have it set up. If we look at this code, it's purging the nozzle in a straight line right along this part of the bed. So right on the edge of the bed. Now, what I'm going to do rather than delete this code, if I don't want to use a set of code, I can just add a semicolon in front of it and that comments it out. Now, if we go over to the printable page and I'll put a link below, we can take a look at how to set this up. So looking at the printables page, if I scroll down, there's a really good description with screenshots showing how this works. Basically, this code, in order for it to be appropriate, is going to need to be inserted into the start code. So we want to, and we're going to insert it right below that purge code that I've already commented out. So it should be right under this code here. And the reason for putting it under this, I don't want to delete what's there. So I still have it just in case this doesn't work like I hoped, but I have the new code. Now eventually I can go through and just clean this code up and delete the commented code. Now, at first, when I look through here, I wasn't quite sure how far or how to install this, and I didn't really see a section here where I could copy the code, but then I quickly realized that this is under the files here. So I have the option of downloading several samples of code that show, have the line set up. Now, I'm looking right here at this triangle in the lower left, 
and I see this triangle on the build point. So what I'm going to do is just download this code and I'll download a text file. I'm just going to open that up and copy this code. So I'm copying it. And then I'm going to go over to Orca Slicer and paste this right under my existing code that's been commented out. So I've pasted the code in and I'm going to save it. Now what I should be able to do is slice this and we'll take a look at what happens. Now if we slice the model, let's see what the results look like. And we see here, there is the triangle. So that's pretty cool. Now this does eliminate the need for a skirt and it, but in my case, I like the skirt because I use that to sort of make sure that my layer lines are tight and I have the bed leveled appropriately. So I'm going to leave that enabled. Now, let's just run a quick experiment here. The print time right now is 53 minutes, 26 seconds. So let me copy that. I'm going to go back real quick and just go back to my old set of code. And I'm curious if that makes a big difference in time. And I probably should have done this before I copied the code in, but that's not how I roll. So let's uncomment this. And we'll see just out of curiosity if this makes any difference. I don't think it will, but it might. So, Basically, this is adding on this print about five seconds. And so that's interesting. Now, I'm, there's the purge line I had over there, but that's using a lot more filament than that little triangle, I believe. So again, that's sort of interesting. Now, I like the idea of it's all more compact over by the object. So let's go back to the code there. So again, just sort of interesting that this does add a little bit. And I'm wondering if the different patterns, because it looks like from the comments, people have made all sorts of different patterns for this rather than the just the triangle or straight lines. So let's hit save again. So that's saving. And I'll hit slice again. And so again, looking great. And as you can see, it added a total time of approximately five seconds, so not bad. And five seconds doesn't bother me at all. Now, I am using Clipper on this printer, so we have to make one change to my printer config in Clipper. If we look at this, there we need to up the value to at least 2.5 for the max extruder cross-section. So we don't need to do this for tomorrow, and this is strictly a Clipper configuration setting. So I'm under my extruder and I'm just going to add this value. So add in max extrude cross section 2.5. I'm going to save and restart and let that start. That should take a minute. And once that restarts, I will send the print to the printer. So I have it loaded with filament and let's go back over to Orca Slicer. And I'm just going to go up to the top here and hit print and upload and send it to my printer. I will look at the browser real quick and just make sure that is doing something. And we can see that it has loaded the Benchy and the printer starting. So let's give this a couple minutes and we'll come back and take a look. Okay, so I ran into an issue here. It looks like the max extrusion needs to be up some more. So I'm going to up that to, let me look at this. I'm going to up it to three and see what that does. So I'll just go back to my printer.config and up that value. I'm going to up it to four. 
and I'll hit save and restart. Let that restart and then I'll resend the print. So after I made that one correction, I've now finished the Banshee. And as you can see, I think it actually looks pretty good. Let me zoom in on it. And so you can see, Banshee, there's a little triangle. Now I can tell what the hour is. It really poured out a lot of filament there. So it's a really thick line and it purged a whole lot. I actually think that's all right. Because again, it, it, the Banshee looks good. I mean, there's some small issues with it, but nothing to do with the base. And again, probably some additional tunings needed on this printer. But I will say this, I, I like this adaptive line purge. And as I mentioned, this from uh, Teaching Tech. He has some really awesome content for you to take a look at. And all this, from what I've read, is based off of Camp. And probably in my next video, I'll go over installing Camp and setting that up. So again, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. This is Mike again. If you're having trouble with your 3D printer, I'm putting a link in the video description of how you can schedule a 15 minute consult with me. I'm more than happy to sit down with you, see if we can figure out what the problem is, see if we can get your printer rolling. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I've enabled memberships. And so for a small monthly contribution, you can help support my work. Now, ideally what I'm going to do is use any money and same for the advertising I get for the channel. I'm going to use that to buy more 3D printers and more equipment and more technology that I could use here on the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.